Good morning everyone from Indiana. I'm back in the Midwest. I'm going to be here for a month and even though I'm not going to be going on many photography trips, if any, I'm going to be doing plenty of photography during that time. That's because, as you know, I try to shoot as often as I can almost daily, no matter where I am and no matter what I'm doing, even if it's just a busy day at home in front of the computer. I've been doing this for a few years and I believe that it's helped me quite a lot to become a better photographer. In this video we'll talk about how a daily photography habit can be the key to making great photographs, how it can help you improve as a photographer and how to develop a habit like this no matter your location or occupation or the camera gear that you have with you. Photography is a tricky art because literally anyone can get lucky and take a good photograph. All we need is to be at the right place at the right time. And that's great if it happens, but the chances are very, very low. What I want for you instead, and what I want for myself as well, is consistency. We need to be consistent. We are not here for the instant gratification. We are not here for the once in a lifetime hit. Of course, we like making good images, we like uh, seeing results, but we relish what photography adds to our life in a daily basis because it makes us aware of things that we wouldn't have noticed otherwise because it takes us out of that autopilot mode, even if only temporarily. So why wait until the weekend to do photography? Why wait until the next big trip to the Grand Canyon? And I hear you, you are busy, you have a job, you have kids and no time for photography and perhaps you live in a place where nothing ever happens. But I believe that pretty much anyone can take on a daily photography habit. This is not about taking a lot of photos, it's not about spending a lot of time thinking about photography, it's more about making photography part of your life. Practice makes perfect. As we said, the more we do it, the better we get at it. This is not only the case for photography, but pretty much anything in life. If we try photography on a daily basis, we'll be exposing ourselves to a lot of different situations and we'll be testing our photography skills in very different situations very often. These experiences will make us better photographers and the lessons learned from them will come in very handy when we do get the chance to go somewhere on a photography a trip. Think of it as training for your eyes, training for your mind, training for photographers. You get to know your camera because of course the more you use your camera the better you get to know it. If you only take pictures with your camera from trip to trip with weeks or even months in between them you might lose all the mechanisms that you had developed in the field. When we are in the field the more we can focus on our subjects, on our compositions, the better. That's why I'm a huge advocate of automatic modes in the digital cameras because they make the camera less of a distraction so we can pay more attention to what we have in front of us, to the composition, to the subject. It is when using the camera becomes second nature to us that we can give 100% of our attention to the subject, to the composition, to the image that we are trying to make. You also get to know yourself a little bit better. Whatever you might think about the place where you live and the people you interact with on a daily basis, they are very unique to you. Think about it. Who else in the world gets to live your life? No one else gets or has access to the exact same places that you have to. No one else has access to the exact same people you hang out with. And you should use that and you should look for images there. I used to think that my hometown was a boring place and now it's one of my favorite locations to shoot at. I walked almost every single street in town and I got to find spots I didn't even know existed before. I also got to know myself a little bit better because being constantly in the lookout for images made me more aware of what I'm thinking and what I'm doing at any given moment. 
So as we've seen, a daily photography habit can make you a better photographer and it can make you get to know the place where you live, the people you hang out with and yourself a little bit better. So the question now is how can we develop this habit? Patience. You are going to need a lot of patience. Don't get too frustrated if you fail to take photos during the first days. This will take time. Habits take time to build, especially when you are tight on time. Be patient. This is a marathon, not a sprint. Always carry a camera with you. As I said, this is about making photography part of your life. So you're going to need to have a camera on you at most times. Any camera will do. A phone will do just fine. Phones are more than capable uh, these days, but I still recommend having a standalone camera on you. Uh, and if you can, the very same camera that you're going to be using in the field, maybe with a different lens. I uh, carry with me my A7R II with a tiny, small, compact uh, pancake lens, a 35 2.8, I believe it is, because that combination recreates better the experience that I have in the field and it makes me pay more attention to what's around me, makes me look for more images than a phone really does. But if the phone works for you, that's totally fine. I also like using compact cameras in the winter. I always have one with me in the pocket of my uh, jacket or my winter coat. And in the summer, I use uh, straps to bring my cameras with me, especially the uh, full frame camera or a camera bag, a, a small slim bag. I have a video where I uh, talk about the gear that I bring with me, usually on walks. I'm gonna link it on the uh, top right corner. But again, whatever works best for you and your situation. The camera should be within reach and easily accessible though, because if you leave it in the bottom of your backpack, well, chances are that you're not going to take it out to take any photos. So as much as you can have it uh, within reach, maybe in your purse, in your camera bag, in your pocket, whatever you can, the best you can do uh, in your situation. So it is more likely, so you give yourself more chances and better odds at making images that will present to you while you walk, while you go to work, or while you are with the kids. That leads us to the next point, that is to try to find images everywhere, no matter where you are. Try, of course, inside your house, from your bedroom, but also try going to work, coming from work. Try at work if you can. You can document your life, but that is not exactly what I'm talking about here. What I'm talking about in this video is about making images that resemble the ones that we would make out in the field or whatever, if you work in a studio, the images that you'd be making in a studio. In my case, that is black and white, fine art images, even though I don't like to call them that way, but you know, I try to recreate that style, that, uh, that mood that I look for when I go somewhere on a photography trip, I try to find it in my day-to-day -day life. Hard, you say? Of course it's hard. It's supposed to be hard. This is training and it's meant to make us better. So it needs to challenge us. But just think about it, because if you are able to make good images, images that you like in your style at home, just imagine the images that you will be able to make when you go to a more interesting place and location. It's all about finding beauty. It's all about finding those beautiful things, no matter where you are, no matter what you are doing. And that requires time, that requires effort, that requires a lot of practice. The good news is that you can do it every day and you can start right now. Find time. As I said, this is about making photography part of our life, so we shouldn't need to find time for it, but still, if you find yourself having a really hard time uh, uh, finding that time to do photography, then I have a video from a couple years ago that might help a little bit, and it's, uh, it's about how to find time to make uh, for photography, how to make photographs, and you can find the link on the top right corner as well. Set a daily goal. This is totally not necessary, but it might help you, because having a set fixed number of pictures that you would like to take every day, and that could be five, it could be a hundred, the exact number doesn't really matter. The important thing here is to have 
a number that uh, or a, a goal that pushes you, that forces you to look for more images on a daily basis. It could be the motivation that you might not have otherwise. So if it helps you, just set that number, try to take that many pictures every day. Contact sheets. This is very related to the previous point. I don't have a daily fixed amount of or number of pictures that I want to take on a daily basis, but I do collect all the images that I take, the good ones, the bad ones, all of them, and I put them all together in a book that it's building up, you know, over time, slowly but surely. And it's like contact sheets of all the, the, the photographs that I take. I've been doing this for a few months now. I'm sharing all of the monthly contact sheets over on my Patreon page. I'm going to leave the link in the description down below if you want to support my work there and you want to have access to those contact sheets. But I think this is a, a good way. This is a great idea to, uh, again, to push you a little bit more because it gives a little bit of purpose to those images uh, that you might take on a daily basis because they are going to be part of that volume, of that book. Not only have these contact sheets made me take more photos, but I'm, my hope is that in the future I can use them you know, to look back and see my progress and see the, the, the photos that I was taking uh, years ago and see how, how I'm doing uh, or how I will be doing in a few years from now and see how uh, differently I act or behave towards some subjects or landscapes or whatever. So I think that, that will be very interesting to see in a few years down the road. Just shoot, just take the photograph. You can always delete them. Sometimes all we need is just that first click to get us going. That's why I start my, uh, my days, my photography trips to uh, shooting very early, sometimes even before leaving the house, because that sets the mood for the rest of the day. All right, in conclusion, I take photos every day, first and foremost, because I love it. I mean, because it enriches my life and it makes it better, but also because it's good practice, it's good training, it makes me a better photographer, it makes me more aware of what's around me, and that in turn will make me a better photographer in the field and I will be taking better photos when I go on a photography trip. Not just that, but uh, even though it might be hard to see right now the potential in there, no matter where you live, no matter where you are, there is always an image to be made. And the good thing about that one image is that it's going to be unique to you, it's going to be original, and you're going to be even more proud of that image that you made at that place than the images that you make in very exotic and stunning locations where everyone is already making images. I hope the video was helpful I gave you some ideas as well as some motivation to get outside and try to make some images. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.